Gary Payton was shown to me by my little brother, Joseph, who's a DJ. Gary is an artist, a graphic designer, who's worked with Getter, and he's known for doing these hoodies, which we'll show right here, that are hand-drawn. Every single one of them is custom-made, and he sells them using his Instagram. So I wanted to have him on the podcast to talk about how he grows his brand. We also talked a lot about how to get art into coffee shops, how to throw art shows, how to develop as an artist, some of his inspirations. Very interesting stuff. Here it is, my interview with Gary Payton on the Alex Berman podcast. By the way, if you want these before they go live on YouTube, you want them early, go to Spotify, go to iTunes, search Alex Berman podcast. You can hear all of these. But for the YouTubers, here it is, my interview in full with artist Gary Payton. Gary Payton is an artist and graphic designer based out of Northern California. His artwork has a unique style utilizing heavy lines and minimalism. He's done branding work with Bleep Bloop, Bass, Getter, Trippy Burger, just name a few. Welcome to the podcast, Gary. Thanks for having me. 100%. My little brother, Joseph, is a DJ, and he was just showing me your art like a couple weeks ago on Instagram. I was just blown away by what, you, what you're doing. Awesome. Thank you, man. I was, I was wondering how you might have come across me. That's cool. Yeah. Um, how did you, how'd you develop your art style? Or like, where did this look come from? Because it, se- it seems like you're doing what a lot of artists try to do, which is like all of your stuff, it's clear that it comes from the same artist. Well, thanks, man. Um, I grew up in the Bay Area, San Francisco Bay Area, and there's a thriving uh, art scene, and there's lots of art on the street to look at, and uh, there's a lot of like kind of character-based uh, graffiti artists in the Bay Area, and uh, a couple of them that I'd like to name off as my influences would be Gats, Graffiti Against the System, uh, Ross Terms, Dead Eyes, Safety First. It's like a, a lot of street artists from the Bay Area kind of influence my style. And it's like to say what I do is kind of a mashup of my own brain and staring at a lot of art uh, for the last 10 years or so. Yeah. Um, I've been doing this forever. Uh, the the whole like five eyed aesthetic or motif um, has really planted itself within me in the last couple of years through working with my buddy Bleep Bloop. Um, he, I was, I was doing that art style and we were working on art for his music a little bit. And one day he was like, Hey, I want to use this. And uh, I drew up a bunch of them for him and it stuck. And, uh, been doing it ever since that's amazing so what so how did that come about I mean, actually the, the thing i want to ask so looking at your instagram you've got a bunch of tattoo designs too is that is that super trippy like when people have their have your art on their arms <laughs> <laughs> completely <laughs> wild um i love it i i whenever somebody asks me hey can i get can i get this tattooed my answer is almost always yes um i rarely do i draw tattoos to people most of most of the tattoos you see on my instagram are bleep bloop art so he is in he is a bass music artist and uh we've been friends for a very long time and he's got quite the cult following and i've kind of been able to become a part of that and uh brand the visual side of it and uh so you know those are kind of my fans are friends now as well. Yeah, I think my little brother found you through Getter too. So it's like you're really getting around in that scene. Nice. Yeah. Uh, much love for that dude. He's given me a lot of great opportunities over the last couple of years. How do you approach your career? I'm re- I'm really interested in this because you're a full time artist, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. I am a full time artist. As long as there's work, I'm doing it. <laughs> so how do you? I guess how do you approach that? Like, how are you getting by? Minimally. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what, um, someone I really look up to wrote a, an article a couple of years ago, emphasizing the importance of keeping a low overhead uh, financially in your life in order to pursue your dreams to the fullest. You know, like don't take on a car payment if you want to have a lot of time to do your art because uh, it's going to get in the way. You know, don't take on more rent than you can afford if you don't want to be working a you know serving job to handle it or something so i try and keep other elements of my life uh 
as cost efficient as possible um, in order to be able to really just spend my time doing my art. Um, it's been working out better and better, to be honest. And I find that as you know, more money comes into my life, more money gets spent. But um, I really just try and keep everything else focus on me being able to do my art as many hours a day as possible. Um, I used to work, before I was doing this full time, I was teaching or like facilitating an after school arts program uh, here in Northern California. And it was really great because I got to do art all day and work with teenagers doing art. Um, but the money wasn't necessarily there and uh, doing graphic design jobs has equated to more of that. Uh, I don't I don't really like to sound so money centric, but you know, you're asking me how how do I go about kind of surviving doing this and uh money's a big part of it, you know? Yeah. And then uh I think one of the most impressive things or what stood out the most to me was the because uh, I'm in clothing design too. So the hoodie the way that you were designing these custom hoodies and the way that you're selling them where it's basically like you'll do well like twelve hoodies and then each one is in a specific size. Like the whole the whole way you're approaching that uh, clothing sales, I think, is very unique. Thank you, man. Um, I, I've been for a long time kind of trying to develop a, a clothing brand, the more traditional way of doing all the screen printing and kind of the, the lifestyle brand format of like, you know, it's more than a brand. It's a lifestyle. And like, that's cool. Screen printing is cool. I love it. But uh, it's a big commitment. So for me to be able to just have what's in my mind and pick up a, a paint pen and put it on whatever color hoodie I want is a lot lower risk than connecting with a screen printer or screen printing myself and burning the screens, buying the ink, you know, finding an oven to dry them in. It kind of eliminated that whole process and allowed me to get one off hand done art of mine out to people. Um, it's been awesome. Uh, the, the reception that these hoodies have gotten and I'm going to ride it out for a while because it's, it's going well and people are, people are liking it and I'm liking it. So what more could I really ask for, you know? Yeah. Um, where does that, it, it, are most of the sales through Instagram or are you in stores or anything or like, what's that kind of look like? The sales are all happening online. Um, I, before I was really doing this as like a graphic design thing, I was doing a lot of art shows locally and in, in San Francisco and stuff. and I don't have too much luck selling paintings, to be honest with you. Um, not to say I don't sell paintings, but uh, the clothing thing, it's its just more accessible to people. It's more affordable. And um, most of my, my fan base is everywhere, like across America, Canada. The furthest one I sent was like Australia. I sent another one to the Netherlands. So like people are, people are, are getting eyes on it from all over the world. And, I'm really big on the fact that like storefronts are kind of kind of a thing of the past. Like it's great to have storefronts. I love it, but it's a big cost to take on, you know, or like um, if I'm doing it through my website, I'm not paying, I'm not doing consignment to anybody. I'm just able to like make the direct sales and stuff. So um, yeah, I utilize the internet, not stores for that. How do you know how many hoodies to make or like what goes into that? Like, uh, yeah. Are you budgeting every month? Are you doing a certain amount or like, what does that kind of business model look like? How do I know how many to make? There is a saturation point. <laughs> I'd rather not get into the numbers, but I did find that, uh, if you over, if you flood the market with something, people are going to stop buying it. Uh, I'm, I, I really, I don't do much advertising per se. I don't promote things through like uh, online promotion tactics really. I kind of just post pictures a lot. I, using Instagram story has been a big way to promote. Um, sorry, I, I got kind of far away from the question. Do you remember what it was? Yeah. Uh, it's like supply. Like, how do you figure out how many hoodies oh. to produce at once? Like, how did that? Yeah, I, I mean, you half answered it, which is there. there is a saturation point. So, like, how did you find out what that was? Were there, was there any experimentation? Like, how did you kind of build this up? Well, um, I found it by kind of hitting it, going a little bit over and... Um, just noticed the sales slowing down. It's like, all right, time to time to reevaluate this, and kind of every every time I do a release now, I'm trying to like step it up. I don't I don't want to be giving people the same thing over and over. I want to be 
giving them something new. I want to be giving them something exciting because that, that can create return customers for me as well and um, kind of build relationships of like, what's he going to do next? So I'm, I'm trying to do that um, as much as possible. Like my next thing I want to do is actually start treating hoodies like a canvas and actually painting on them instead of just drawing on them and it's less than functional uh for, for wearing purposes but it's very like it's it's a cool concept for me i like to paint i like to draw the hoodies are are taken off so i've actually been working on another run of them that uh, are that are painted all the way on the front and i've been kind of uh utilizing this like versace medusa which is one of my favorite like modern images um, and then doing my twist on it and people are loving that and i have another thing on the way that it's a secret uh of what the next like uh base image will be so yeah of these hoodies so like it, from a production point of view so let's say you're releasing 10 hoodies how many are you throwing out of those 10 or like how much is like <laughs> are, is there uh, waste involved is that your thing i'm saying like let's say you deliver 10 is every drawing a winner or like how are you deciding what to release and what not to release man i've uh i've been drawing for a very long time <laughs> i have a pretty good like comfort with it and uh one thing i found is the more that i do art the looser it gets and the less i'm worried about making something perfect and the more i'm able to just kind of convey like a rhythmic style that i like to think flows out of me pretty freely um i don't i, I to be honest with you I don't have any like duds that came out of it. I have one that I haven't finished because I got in a little over my head with it. Um, but no, they're pretty much like just just hitting, man. Like they pretty much just come out of me. Like the, the images, I, I draw constantly. That's interesting. So like, what is that? I guess that confidence comes from drawing a lot, like you said. I'm wondering from a mindset point of view, like do you ever hate your own work? Um. I, I wouldn't say I hate it. I, I sometimes worry about getting too niched in. Like I'm, I'm working in a small, a very like small. I, I found success working in like EDM branding, EDM artists, and kind of working off of that. And I really don't want that to be my only thing. Like I, I, I really want my my art and my reach to be wider than that. So I really try and like expand beyond that and i do other things besides like my five eye characters and stuff you know that's just that's the one that i really put out a lot because people enjoy it and it, it's keeping people that it's keeping that audience in the loop um i have a lot of other art projects i'm working on but they're not like fully there yet so for for now i'm kind of riding that wave and i, and I don't hate it at all i actually really love that character and so i'm very fortunate that that's the one that that's kind of taking off because it's something that I already really enjoy drawing and exploring further into. That's interesting. Yeah. Cause it does feel like you could possibly get boxed in mm -hmm. if you're drawing similar things, but I see like if you, if you look at your hoodies or at least if I look at your hoodies, I can see it's the same character, but it's like, it's every single take is different or at least subtly different. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, that's the magic of hand doing them too. It's like, they're not going to be the same, even if I want them to be the same, you know? Yeah. How'd you get involved with, so you said you were friends with some DJs. How are you getting involved with uh, these branding clients? Like, how are you finding these DJs that want to work with you? Um, I Just kind of by word of mouth. And like, there's a very small scene, the, the bass music community or the, the dubstep electronic music community in general. Um, so... I'll reach out to people sometimes, but usually people reach out to me. Um, I have had a lot of success branding this artist named Bleep Bloop. So a lot of people come to me wanting like a, a similar thing. And I usually have to turn their jobs down because I'm very like committed to the journey that I'm taking with him. And I don't want to jeopardize that by uh, kind of diluting my brand just spreading it out too much in the same stream you know so i'm usually excited when uh a client from outside that scene that has seen my art through that scene or my instagram approaches me to do something off that beaten path like you hit me up and i was like this is not really related to the scene let's do it you know what i mean yeah 100 uh i saw this article a while ago and it was 
it was talking about how in the past, like the Patrons, like the people that used to support artists were big corporations or were these people that were hiring them for business reasons. And it's like, that's where most of the art comes from. From uh, c- corporations funding people? Yeah, from like corporations or like random like Patrons, like supporting the art. Um, yeah. Versus like artists kind of just painting whatever they want. And I think it's so interesting, like how you're able to balance. I don't know. It's it's like graphic design almost. It's you're, um, I don't know. You're not just painting whatever you want. Like you have that specific style and you keep going after it. Yeah. Yeah, man. Thank you. Um, I, I, I really have never been like a clean cut in the line graphic designer type of person. I'm more of like an artist. And I think like, uh, it works out well when I'm able to work with companies that want that rougher, imperfect human feel, you know? Um, I, I really hope that in the future, this leads to collaborations with larger companies. Um, but all I'm really trying to do is stay prepared for if that opportunity comes up by working, working, working all the time. For sure. When you were... um. When you were starting out, you were saying you're getting a lot of uh, gallery shows and stuff like that. How did you um, how did you get in in the gallery world? Uh, I wouldn't say I'm in the gallery world as much as like the coffee shop circuit, to be honest. Um, okay, kind of just like looking for venues. Like like I was painting like crazy, so um, I had bodies of work, and I would approach venues that that may be able to host that body of work for a month or two and then have an opening party and invite my DJ friends and uh, make, make it a good time and try and get 100 or 200 people out there. That's a successful night, you know? So what's that look like? Like are you walking into these coffee shops with your paintings or were you showing them on your phone or like what's that actual process look like? Instagram is my business card, if that makes sense. So you'd like walk into these coffee shops, talk to the owner. Like I'm, I'm wondering about how you set up those first couple shows. Um, so actually uh, a good friend of mine uh connected me kind of pushed me into my first one um at a local coffee shop where i live and um he kind of orchestrated the whole thing and then uh it was a successful enough show and after that i I got i had a, a hang of it and uh wanted to reach out to more venues or people and just kind of like show your body of work to whoever's in charge um of the the venues you know uh also another place that i was really like hanging my art and setting up was at music events um pretty much like i was young and just trying to get it in front of as many eyes as i could and like-minded people it's kind of clicking now i didn't even really think about coffee shops i was thinking about selling paintings through galleries that's like where i was thinking so when you're saying hanging it up in coffee shops and stuff like that like i've seen paintings up in coffee shops before like do those did those sell for you or like, what is that? Uh, you have your opening night for the most part, uh, as far as sales go. Like for me, like, well, like I said, trying to get a hundred or 200 people out to an event, like you're going to, somebody's going to want something like, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a numbers game at that point. Like I look at Instagram the same way, like for every thousand people that follow me, one person might want to, you know, connect and purchase something. Um, yeah, so I don't know. I kind of look at it like that, like a numbers thing. Yeah. Where do you kind of see yourself going? You said you're trying to branch out, maybe do some more stuff outside of music, that sort of thing. Um, how do you kind of see yourself uh, evolving? Well, a booming industry in California, as you very well know, is the you know, medical cannabis or the legal cannabis industry. So uh, I've been kind of chasing that a little bit not not too great success so far but um that's a big one i i I really like hope that my brand can grow strong enough and my voice with my art can grow strong enough that i can approach companies like adidas or like i don't know uh big companies like that like i want to be working in things i like like fashion music uh i don't know film like doing like uh graphics like not like cgi graphics so much but like you know intro credits stuff like that um i i'm I'm really kind of not sure where it's where it's going right now beyond that um and my strategy to get wherever that may be is just to like be putting in the work um not like just 
blindly putting in the work, but, you know, seeing what comes up, seeing what works for me, seeing what I like to do, seeing what I don't like to do, and following the road as I figure those things out. That's really interesting about the big brands, because there are a lot of, I mean, Adidas, Nike, like all these guys, even Ikea is doing collabs with all sorts of artists. These yeah, I, Ikea did a collab with Virgil Abloh, who's like, now the, <laughs> the chair know. with the doorstop. <laughs> yeah, dude, like, uh, so you know about it. Yeah. 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 Um, I, I really, I look up to people like that that are doing what they want to do and getting it in front of people and strategically using their voice to, you know, uh, make a buck and uh, get their art in front of like, I don't know, like think about that Virgil Ikea thing. We're talking about probably millions of people buying this like millennial collection or something like I don't know. I run I run stuff like that through my head and kind of like while I'm thinking forward, like what would that mean for me? What would what would my alterations to these things be? How would they be different? You know, and currently I'm kind of in a, a state of like I want to put eyes on everything. Like I just want everything to have eyes on. It. That's that's like one of my stamps of my brand. And I, I like to look at my art as like uh, characters that I kind of use as hieroglyphs and. Um, I can speak a lot with like sneakers, gold chains, dudes with five eyes, babes with guns that are from space, uh, you know, dinosaurs, like these funny characters that I've come up with, like they're going to play a part in my future wherever it goes. Like they're with me. I wonder how much of that is pitching these brands. So like sending cold emails to Adidas or like just basically going out there and, and like, I guess approaching these guys directly. Yeah. And, uh, uh, I was listening to your podcast a little bit and it's very interesting to me like uh, how you kind of pick apart like branding and marketing and stuff like that. So I was thinking maybe off the record we could maybe, I could pick your brain about a couple of things. Um, yeah, for sure. I got some ideas for your uh, hoodie pricing too. I think you should bid, bid them up. So basically if it's like $100 a hoodie, every time anyone buys a hoodie, the price should go up by like $10 for the rest of them. I like that. I like that. Um <laughs> I was I was able to like that's another really cool thing about these hoodies is they're hand done and I don't feel guilty charging when I'm charging for them. Um I, I really like to make things accessible for people as much as possible. And I mean like financially accessible to whoever wants to buy it. Usually when I support artists I like it's through a print or a t shirt or you know, not an original piece of art because I'm not there yet and I, I recognize and respect that most of my audience isn't there yet. Yeah, for sure. Um, how much do you think about your your audience when you're creating your art? Um, how much do I think about my audience? I'd like to say a lot. Um, like it's kind of like a compass within me. That's like, you know, it's, are people gonna are people gonna be into this or not? It's not like that's the focus, but I guess I think about my audience because I'm trying to forward what I'm doing all the time. I'm trying to like advance to the next thing, the next thing. And I like to think that uh, my my audience that's engaged is watching me grow with this. And I, I try and make everything, not necessarily better than the last, but like build on what I've been doing every time I do something. So I'm thinking about other people and myself while I'm doing that. That's cool. It, um, it reminds me of cubism a bit too. Like I know you mentioned a bunch of street artists. Are there any like, classical artists that you're into at all? Um, like... Picasso's the, the man. Uh, I really, really am drawn to Gustav Klimt, Egon Schiele, and the time period and art period called the Viennese Secession. They were seceding from the fine art schools and kind of writing their own rules for how to do things. And it was right around the time the camera came into play and uh, the do documentation through art became less crucial because now you could photograph things and there there was a lot more room to play around and to make art for the sake of art um be, before that i it, it, it's hard to trace like abstract art like yeah you can trace it way back like i really like to look at like african masks and stuff like that but um i'm very interested in the period of like the late 1800s early 1900s when the rules were getting broken and new styles were getting written and stuff like that. Very cool. Yeah, I'm looking at this now. I can, I can definitely see that. 
uh, yeah. the Viennese secession stuff. All right, um, Gary, where do you want to send people? Where should people go after uh, listening to this podcast? Uh, they should go to my Instagram, at Gary Payton on Instagram, uh, or GaryPayton.com. The homepage of that is my Instagram feed. Um, I, I kind of funneled everything into that to make it easy for myself to put out art. Uh, awesome. On all, for all platforms. Cool. Thanks for being here. Yeah, man. Thank you for having me. Thanks for listening to another episode. If you want more content like this, subscribe to the podcast. If you want more in-depth B2B sales training, of course, check out the YouTube channel, b2bsalestraining.org. And if you need marketing support for your digital agency, Experiment 27 helps digital agencies grow their number of leads by building lead generation systems. That is Experiment 27. Dot com. There's also notes on all the podcast episodes there and free sales courses, which we've gotten some very good feedback about. You can also check out my social media. I'm on Twitter, Alex Berman with no E, A-L-X Berman or Instagram, Alex Berman one. Till the next episode, I will see you later. <laughs>